Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and welcome to another video review. This is part two of the two-part series on the Radeon 9700 Pro video card. In all of my benchmark tests, I will be using a balanced performance setting both in the Direct3D as well as the OpenGL. I will not be using the highest quality setting, nor will I be using the performance setting, but rather the balanced setting. So that is very important to remember when you're seeing the benchmark results. Now something else that I will be actually disabling is the V-Sync. Also, I should mention that I will not be overclocking this card in any of these benchmark results. So when you see them again, keep that in mind as well. Of course, if you set this all the way back here to performance and you overclock the card, you're going to get higher results. This is not my intent here today. My intent here today is to really demonstrate what this card can do at a decent, balanced quality setting as well as with the card at default speeds. The 3D Mark 2001 second edition result is 14,915. In the Comanche 4 demo, these are the following benchmark settings. A screen resolution of 1280 by 1024, the bit depth is 32. Texture compression is checked, I've disabled the V-Sync, and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 53.59 frames per second. In the Quake 3 Arena demo, these are the following graphic settings. A video mode of 1280 by 1024, the color depth is 32 bit. The geometric detail is at high, the texture detail is at max. The texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 205.8 frames per second. In the Unreal Tournament 2003 demo, at a screen resolution of 1024 by 768, the flyby is 196 and the bot match is 68. And at a resolution of 1280 by 960, the flyby is 164 and the bot match is 67. In the XS mark, I will be using all the default settings except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. And the XS mark result is 8094. The 3D Mark 2001 second edition result is 11,312. In the Comanche 4 demo, these are the following benchmark settings. A screen resolution of 1280 by 1024, the bit depth is 32. Texture compression is checked, I've disabled the V-Sync, and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 35.54 frames per second. In the Quake 3 Arena demo, these are the following graphic settings. A video mode of 1280 by 1024, the color depth is 32 bit. The geometric detail is at high, the texture detail is at max. The texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 111.4 frames per second. In the Unreal Tournament 2003 demo, the results at 1024 by 768 are the flyby is 144 and the bot match is 44. The Unreal Tournament 2003 result at a resolution of 1280 by 960, the flyby is 135 and the bot match is 43. In the XS mark, I will be using all the default settings except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. And the result is 4,349. Overall, whether you're in an application or a game, this video card is going to please everyone. The only drawback to a card like this, of course, is the expensive price tag. Aside from that, Everything else on this card is simply fantastic. 
in 3D games, it performs extremely well. Applications, crisp 2D, very vivid colors, and that applies to both 3D and 2D applications. You have, of course, TV out. You also have the dual display support. And right now, ATI has really committed themselves to driver support, which is simply fantastic. Overall, without a doubt, this is a kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, hop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, go into the forums. If you haven't already registered in the forums, you can. It's completely free. And once you do, you can leave your very own suggestions and comments. Until the next time, take care.